G'day gorgeous, how are you? So today is the 8th of April. There is an eclipse today uh, for us in the Southern Hemisphere and then for all of you gorgeous human beings in the Northern Hemisphere, you'll have that uh, later on tonight or tomorrow morning depending on where you are. And normally I would not feel compelled at all to actually come in and talk about an eclipse. These uh, cycles uh, of eclipses absolutely do factor into people's sessions and they come up as a priority for various different reasons. So it's not that they're not important. It's just that I don't ever get driven. I don't feel inspired to actually come and talk about them uh, at all. But today I do. And this is really important because the these uh Things that are going on all around us, these changes in not only on our on our own planet, but these changes in our universe, in the world around us, they are such subtle shifts and changes, but they do have a profound effect on us. And I know uh, we're not largely aware of those, but they happen regardless. They're happening regardless. And every single time these shifts in planetary influences happen, you shift along with them and you don't even realise that you are doing that. And they will have an influence uh, over your life and what, what comes up for you and what cycles you go through and what kind of concepts you're dealing with and all sorts of wonderful things. This one for whatever reason, this eclipse is coming up as being really important, really, really significantly important to not only as us as individual human beings, but to the entire species of humans on the planet. And the and I want to talk about two things. So the first thing is there's a predominant theme coming up. And this shows up in people's sessions, in the group session work that I do, in the study groups that I run, and the concept is change. This is all about change, this time frame that we're in now. We have been in this uh, for about two weeks and we will continue to be under this cycle where the it's like, you know, when you're having a conversation with somebody and, you, and you'll and you think back and you go, oh, the topic of conversation was largely about this. These are the influences that we're under right now. It's like an influencing topic or an influencing conversational piece, and it's about change. Um, so we've been under, window opened about two weeks ago, we've been under those influences of change for the last two weeks and we will continue to be for the next two weeks but today is a very important day and I'm going to talk about that in a second as to what you perhaps could do. So the way that this change has been showing up is that a lot of people are really resistant to change. That's the first big thing. We resist the change and I know that's been a big thing for me theme for me in my life, like uh, as an example, things that have been trying to in the past come to a conclusion and perhaps a cycle close out or something to finish itself, whether that be a relationship or a, a particular thing that I was doing in business or whatever it is, and I would resist that change. I would be trying to make it work or I would be trying to give it a different life or look at it from a different perspective to see if it can work a different way or instead of really just very neutrally sitting with it and coming to the conclusion of, oh, this wants to actually change into something else. This wants to finish and start again. So that's one uh, aspect of change that can come up. But generally speaking, on a day-to-day -day basis, we get really hooked into our the way that things are and our habits and our patterns that we form deeply in the subconscious mind. And so when change tries to happen, and remember that's that comes from a part of our, our higher consciousness that knows that we need to change. That's that part of our consciousness 
remember the conscious mind doesn't have access to all levels of our consciousness. So there is a lot, and I mean a lot. There's like an ocean amount of a lot of things that you are not aware of that is unfolding or wanting to try and happen that is coming from other levels of the mind. So you could have uh, higher states of your consciousness that really know with absolute clarity and this needs to finish and we need to start going in this direction because that brings us prosperity. That brings us happiness. That brings us new connections. That opens us up into a whole new sphere of awareness and we grow exponentially, right? But we we resist those changes. We really do. We get hooked into uh, our habits and our patterns, as I mentioned but also the ego tends to tends to like things the way that it is and it t- tends to uh, like to feel safe and secure. So it wants to stay where it is and as things are and we can really resist change, especially when we don't know what's on the other side of that. So there are some lessons here about change at the moment and what has been happening for a few years now is that we collectively are in an enormous process of change and you would have heard me talk about that uh, in the past whether it be in the videos or whether it be in the one-on-one sessions that we've been doing so we're in this huge process of change it is happening regardless so it really what your experience of that change is going to be will be totally dependent on how resistant you are to that change. The more resistant you are to change, the harder it's going to be, the more conflict there will be, the more suffering that you will experience. So this period of time asks us, meaning your higher consciousness asks you to lean in gently and surrender to the process, have less attachment to the the way that you think things should be or the way that uh, the expectations that you have on what should happen and how it should happen. Absolutely have dreams and goals and absolutely work towards those, but have very fluffy edges around those. Be open to your higher consciousness showing you that if you do a diversion this way or if you tweak it and do it this way, then your outcome is going to be far more prosperous or harmonious, right? So it's a it this this change that we're in really is about moving forward with as least amount of attachment and agenda as to how everything is meant to look and to really try to go along with the flow as best as you possibly can. So there is this huge theme around change and that's what this uh, eclipse kept talking about. It's come up in nearly everybody's sessions, which is really unusual for an eclipse season. For me in particular, it is really unusual uh, as we're going through a cycle of eclipse in the past years you'll have uh, one or two clients of maybe a few more where during that period of time this concept of the eclipse comes up and it's and it's possible that you need to align them to it in in a more structured way so they benefit from it the the best that they possibly can but during this cycle pretty much every client And so that really made me stand up and pay attention. The other thing that I really want to quickly talk about is what do you do during this period of time? And I've been asked that a lot. And that was a question that had popped in for me, even for myself, over the few days. And something became abundantly clear to me is in the last day or two is that In this process of change that we're in, and it's not just about accepting change, but we're radically changing as a species. Our consciousness is changing. Our ability to be able to perceive the world around us is changing. Our relationship to 
uh, our fellow human beings is changing. Our uh, awareness, our understanding and our usage of our um, intuition and our instincts is changing. Everything's changing. So one of the things that is going through radical change is our ability to be able to discern and know what it is that we need. Because what we have been doing for a long time is seeking outside validation for ourselves. We go to other people and ask them, I'm thinking about doing this. Do you think that's a good idea? Or I'm... Um, or I'm faced with this situation, what should I do? You know, go searching, searching. And, and I totally get why that's happened as well because one of the things that's been pitched to you in this wonderful marketing campaign is that you have the internet at your fingertips. So if you have a question, you want to know what to do, just ask the internet. And that's something that needs to change, right? Right. You, you you have this unbelievable ability to be able to tap into your self-knowing and to know in a moment what it is that is right for you in that moment, right for you, not right for the person sitting next to you. And that's 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 the reason why in 18 years, I've never facilitated a session that looks any, anything like another person's sessions. I've never done a session that's the same as anybody else's session because everybody is so, so, so unique. Yes, some of our anatomy is the same or similar and our physiology is similar, but really we are very, very, very unique, very unique. So what you need to do today, what is right for you today is not going to be the same as what it is for another person. And I just watched a really lovely video on socials and it was someone sharing uh, a couple of different tra traditions on what they culturally do at this period of time during an eclipse. And there was a, a whole perception of thought over here where they do it a particular way during an eclipse um it means an eclipse means this certain thing and this certain thing and this certain thing like there's a whole set of understandings and a whole set of beliefs around what an eclipse means for this um group of people that align themselves culturally like this right so i'm thinking of the navajo people and they have a very specific way that they navigate eclipse. And then there was somebody that stepped forward who's a yogi. And they have a very different set of understandings and belief of how they navigate the eclipse. And so they bring forth their list or, or their steps on how they navigate eclipses. And then somebody else stepped forward from another a section of our planet who represents a whole bulk of people and they put forward their perception understanding of what is happening for an eclipse and what that means and it's all perfect it is all perfect provided that it aligns with you so here is where this concept of change I think becomes unbelievably important is because this eclipse really represents the profound changes that you are going through as an individual human being. You're going through massive, like, upgrades in your consciousness awareness, right, For for to put it very broadly. And along with that, we're collectively doing it. That's why things are so rapidly and radically changing. And that is a really beautiful and wonderful thing. We need that in order to be able to grow and and transcend a lot of the limitations and and rigidity that we've been bringing in with us and we've been doing on a day to day basis. We need this experience to be able to grow. This is our catalyst experience. So it's it's beautiful. 
So we need to recognise that this change is absolutely needed and embrace the heck out of it. The other thing that we do is right now for this eclipse, what do you do? You, you take moments, and I seriously mean this, you have to take moments to actually feel into, you need the quietness to do with it, to do this. You need to feel into what is right for you as an individual sentient being to navigate this 24, 48 hours. And there is a perfect recipe there for you, just you. And it's going to be maybe slightly different for me, right? You you might get this strong, and I'm just thinking of a girlfriend of mine, you might get this strong feeling that tonight when it gets dark, you need to go run around underneath the moon and and lay on the grass. Or you might feel that this afternoon between Blatimer, in Bladder Meridian time between three and five that you just open your journal and see what comes forward and write some words. I don't know what's right for you. I just know that you already know what's right for you because that information's already within you. You are powerful beyond all your knowing. And, and so maybe we don't go looking for those answers outside of ourselves because the answers are already within. And what this does, every single time you do this, you remind yourself the answer's already within me, the answer's already within me, is that it gives you the opportunity to just pause and to be able to feel into, especially the area of your, your heart brain and your etheric brain, your gut brain, if you feel into, just sit with these areas, like bring your awareness from here down into the heart space like you're tiny little version of yourself pop it down inside your heart and you can sit inside your heart and just see what what comes up for you there you might see colors you might smell something particular might get certain feelings and then you can also take your awareness and take it right down into your gut brain the gut brain and your heart brain are the ones that will have a lot of a lot of information that will be able to help you to understand what it is that you do uh, right now. And just follow whatever comes up, okay? Just trust the process. Don't be too attached to it. Don't, don't worry about buggering it up or, oh, I'm going to miss, I'm not going to receive all the information. What you do is perfectly what you're meant to do. This is a practice now. If this becomes a practice. And it doesn't mean that you don't have conversations with people and say, um, oh, you know, I'm thinking about buying a car and I'm looking at this model and this model, what would you go with? And then observe what somebody says and their reasons for it, but don't be attached to it. Don't let it influence yours. It's, it's, it's healthy to be really curious about the way that people do things and why they do things and what they would gravitate towards and why they would gravitate towards it. That's really healthy. Uh, I, I, I do that, but I think it's part of how we explore uh, us as humans and our human consciousness. I think that's really great. But not grab onto that information and say, yes, well, I, I'm going to do that because I don't know what to do. I, I, I don't, I can't get that information from within me. And if there's any part of your ego right now that's trying to say to you, uh, I don't have good intuition or I can't hear what comes up from within or I can't do this, we're going to call BS on that. Honestly, every single person has an intuitive system. Every single person has an instinctive aspect to that system every single one of you have all these wonderful amazing states and levels of your consciousness so you do have access to this information it's just that you have been disassociated from it for how many rotations around the sun have you been right now so now what we're changing is this practice of 
tuning back in and asking the questions within. And the more you do that, the easier it will become. The easier it will become. Yeah. So you can absolutely go to YouTube and watch your favorite su subscriptions from the people that bring their intuitive uh, information forward on what you can do during eclipses or really significant cycles that we're in. Um, but you just let it, just let all that information come and rest on the table in front of you or wherever you are. Don't absorb it in. And then as that information rests on the table, your heart brain and your etheric brain, which is part of your massive, great big intuitive and instinctive system, they start to sort it, especially the etheric brain. Your etheric brain will start to sort through all that information and it cherry picks the information that is absolutely right for you and discards all the other information and that's perfectly what you want it to do. So when you are thinking, is this period of time relevant for me? I would say, yes, it's it's coming up that it's relevant for absolutely everybody. But what you are prioritised to do, and that's your only focus, not what could I, what I could do, because you can do anything, right? What should you do? Like from a priority standpoint, that's what we're doing. That's what we're asking. Whenever we are facilitating a session, we're always asking your innate wisdom, what is the most important thing that we need to do right in this moment today? It's the same thing. When you find yourself in these particular cycles, you're going to ask your own consciousness, what is the most important thing that I need to do today? with the expectation that your friends and family and people that you walk past, that what is right for them will be different and it's meant to be different because you're so unique, right? So the peeling time out for yourself to actually feel into what it is that you need to do uh, in any given moment, that is really important. And the reason why is because you need that this system to be able to focus in just for a small period of time so it can sort through a lot of information, sensory information, uh, especially sensory information coming in from the world around you and to be able to sort through that. So then this system can actually give you the messages, the internal messaging and communication that tells you what you can do, what is the um, biggest priority. And the way that that communication, the internal communication comes through is going to be different for everybody because we're wired differently. Some people are far more in tune to receiving in, internal um, auditory communication. So you'll, you'll hear communication inside. You might he like hear um, your inner voice say, uh, do journaling this morning before you do anything else or your, your sense of touch, which is what something feels like to you, that might be a really strong sense. So for me, my visual sense is very strong. I can close my eyes and literally just I'm shown the way things need to unfold and what's the best thing to do. It unfolds like a movie rapidly in front of my mind's eye. So my visual sense is very strong for me. My felt sense is also equally as strong. My auditory sense is less as finely tuned. But again, every single time you tune into this and you do this practice, it strengthens the functioning of your subtle senses, uh, of your intuitive psychic senses, and it, they get stronger and they get stronger and they st get stronger as they are meant to be, as they're meant to be. You are designed to be a highly intuitive, where that intuition is highly functioning, sentient being, where all this information is available to you at any moment, okay? So if any questions come up uh, about this, I feel like we've covered it enough to give you a way forward. If any questions come up for this, if you would like me to expand on any of the concepts that I've talked about today in a future video, just pop it into the comments. And uh, here is to uh, a really amazing, amazing eclipse uh, cycle where 
your your way forward through it is the smoothest, easiest, less resistant way as possible, and that you get the the benefits of growth and awareness from it that you possibly can. And I would be really, really uh, excited to know what comes forward for you that you realise that is right for you to do today, okay, or, or over the next few days. It might not even be that it has to happen today. Remember, that's the non-attachment, that we're just we're letting go of that attachment stuff. It might not have to have to happen today or tomorrow. It might be something that you feel like needs to happen next week. So just be open, see what comes up for you and uh, let me know how that goes in the comments. Talk to you next time. Bye.